A group of people raft out to the middle of nowhere, discovering the ruins of a seemingly abandoned frontier town, and decide to set up camp. Why, you ask? I have no idea. You're asking way too much of this movie already. Anyway, they slowly start getting picked off, one by one. Very slowly. I knew nothing about 1981's Scream going in, aside from the comments left by viewers during my last I Love Physical Media video. Those comments did not speak highly of the movie. Still, I went into Scream hoping for a movie that was at least so bad it's good. Well, it's got the so bad part down. The movie book ends with these sequences involving Butcher Baker and Candlestick Maker figurines. One of the figurines supposedly decapitates the other two, and then the eyes of the murderous figurine shifts to stare directly at you. Talk about elevated horror. From there, we're introduced to the cast of characters. There are way too many characters in this movie, and only a select few have anything in the way of development in order to distinguish them from the rest. One guy carries around a piece of wood with him, like a 2x4, as a weapon for most of the movie. He has next to no dialogue. He's just there, holding his piece of wood. That's all he's got. He's like the poor man's hacksaw Jim Duggan. This cast of characters reminds me a lot of the cast from Spookies, who were equally eclectic. You have younger characters, a middle-aged couple, and an older man and his daughter. All the characters appear to be adults, though, and not your typical teenage slasher fodder, which was mildly refreshing at least. Among the characters who do have at least something to do is the token chunky guy who's dumb and clumsy, and the agitated boomer who has a stick up his a- You know where. Scream also has its fair share of WTF moments, just like Spookies, only what it doesn't have that Spookies does is character, personality, the fun factor, Decent pacing, awesome creature effects, and farting muckmen. Man, this movie could really use some farting muckmen. Eventually, the movie takes on this Tin Little Indian's murder mystery motif. One of the characters gets offed, and then suspicion falls on all the rest. Everybody's a suspect! And that might have provided the movie with at least something. But the murder mystery is dropped pretty quickly, and it becomes fairly obvious that... There is another. The ostensibly abandoned ghost town isn't so abandoned after all. But do you think any of this prevents any of the characters from wandering around the ghost town all alone in the middle of the night for absolutely no discernible reason? Wrong. Literally one character decides to just go for a saunter in the middle of the night, whistling as he does. Maybe the guy had a death wish. If so, that wish was granted. Another character decides he needs a beer, and because the beer is in another part of the ghost town, he goes off to get it. And he doesn't come back. But wait, I know you're thinking, what about the kills? Are they at least good? All the kills take place off screen. Well, there is one okay beheading, but it's nothing to write home about. Why would you write home about something like that anyway? Then we're treated to a big lull right in the middle of the movie, where characters just stand around and do absolutely nothing. Then a couple of dirt bikers randomly show up. Then a man in black riding a horse and accompanied by a large dog materializes out of fog and regales everyone with a tale about captaining a ship. No, seriously, I'm not making this part up. The music is also an oddity here. Some of it sounds like it should be playing during the opening credits of a CBS sitcom that aired during primetime in 1980. And then we have musical cues that sound like they were taken directly from a 70s porno. The movie then introduces this wacky supernatural element, and the ending is both ambiguous and infuriating. You get the sense that writer and director Byron Quisenberry was going for this deep, thought-provoking finale, but all it managed to elevate when the closing credits rolled was my blood pressure, because after sitting through all that, I realized... 
This is the ending you're giving me? I nearly screamed. I can only recommend it if you absolutely have to see every movie that was even remotely slashery from the early 80s. And even then, you've been warned. As for the picture quality and sound quality on this release from Dark Force and Code Red, it's pretty good. This release features a brand new 4K scan with extensive restoration and color correction from the original 16mm negatives. Dark Force and Code Red have done an excellent job of giving this movie new life through this restoration, whether it deserved it or not. This certainly isn't the kind of 4K restoration that's going to blow your mind with vibrant colors or crystal clear detail, but for a movie that was shot in 1981 on 16mm and on what was clearly a very modest budget, this is a huge win for fans of the movie. Now, I can't compare this 4K release to any prior release for Scream, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that those older releases were pretty grainy and most likely quite dark. The grain levels here are nicely resolved. Even during the darker sequences, they're not overbearing. There appeared to have been an attempt to brighten the image during several sequences, and even during these, the grain levels weren't a nuisance. There's light wear and damage present from the source print, but it's not a big deal. As for audio, we get a DTS HD Master Audio 2.0 track. The audio was clear, though slightly lacking in body when it comes to the dialogue. Overall, I'd give the picture quality on this release a 4 out of 5 and the audio quality a 3.5 out of 5. And even though the back of the release lists the original theatrical trailer and the option to play this in Maria's B-Movie Mayhem mode, we get neither. We do get an audio commentary from director Byron Quisenberry, which I had to listen to in order to hear him explain the finale, which still provided me with no closure. This is a solid 4K UHD release for Scream from the folks over at Dark Force and Code Red. If you've seen Scream, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. And if you've already picked up this release, let me know your thoughts on it as well. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care. I for I've forgotten the rest. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. And until next time, peace. A huge thank you to all my patrons and channel members for your generosity and support. Become a patron today and get early access to videos, have a say in what content appears on my channel, join me for monthly live streams, exclusive watch parties, and more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream, as well as members-only watch parties. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.